John Alzheimer is known as one of our nation's most recognized credit experts. Having worked for 28 years in the credit industry, John has become one of the most prolific speakers about credit and the go-to authority on answers to credit-related questions. Credit Countdown with John Alzheimer. Hello, my name is John Alzheimer. I am a consumer credit expert. I have almost 30 years of experience in the credit industry. I've spent time at FICO, which is the company that designs and develops the FICO credit scoring system, and Equifax, which is one of the three generally recognized credit reporting agencies in the US. Today, we're gonna to talk about a topic that I know that we don't wanna to have to talk about because hopefully none of us have ever experienced it, but what happens if you have been denied a credit card? And you know what, you can even almost substitute any particular loan product for credit cards. So this could be, what if I've been denied a mortgage? What if I've been denied an auto loan? What if I've been denied for something else that's a credit-based product? But today specifically, we're gonna talk about what if I have been denied a credit card? If you have been denied a credit card, then there is a reason you have been denied. And most of the time, not always, but most of the time, the reason people are denied credit cards is because their credit quality is not good enough for that particular card issuer or for that particular type of product for which you have applied. So it could mean that your credit score is too low. It can mean your credit report has information on it that as a matter of policy, the card issuer sees it and then makes a decision to deny you. You can be denied because you've applied for too many credit cards in the last 12 or 24 months, even if you've got good enough credit. The credit card issuer may not want you just stacking cards on top of cards. They may not wanna be part of that pile of cards, if you will. If you are denied a credit card or any other form of credit, and your credit report or credit score was in part or in full the basis for that decision, then the lender has to send you what's referred to as a notice of adverse action. Some people call them adverse action letters, adverse action notices. Most people call them denial letters because it's essentially the letter from your lender that's gonna indicate that you've been denied. It's gonna indicate the credit reporting agency from where they pulled the information. All adverse action notices now have to include your credit score, so the actual credit score that the lender pulled when you made your application, and then some other information about your rights, meaning that your ability to pull a credit report at no cost because you've been denied, some of the reasons why your score wasn't higher, and then if you've been denied because of something like, you know, your income isn't high enough, then it's gonna indicate that your income isn't high enough or that you have too much debt relative to your income. Point being, is that this letter, which is basically a form letter, meaning that it's kind of, they kind of all look the same because they all have to include certain attributes at, per the law, Fair Credit Reporting Act. These letters are going to be, they're gonna tell the story. They're gonna tell the story as to A, why you've been denied, and then B, what your credit score is. You may get this notice and it may have information about your credit score because that's a requirement, but you may have been denied for something other than your credit score. So for example, if you have too much debt, so pay attention to the wording of the letter and it's gonna give you a very clear picture as to why you have been denied. So then what do you do if you've been denied? Should you try again? I'm going to suggest that the answer is no. If you were denied from a credit card issuer and you just simply resubmit your application, it's highly likely you're gonna get the same exact decision because the lending policies with these credit card issuers is universal within the issuer, meaning that if you don't have a high enough score or if you have information on your credit report that isn't good enough for them or for some other reason, you're still gonna have it the week, ne the next week or the, month, the next month. And if you make the application to the same credit card issuer, they're gonna use the same underwriting criteria and you're still not gonna meet it and you're gonna get denied again. And what you're doing at the same time is now you're loading up your credit report with credit card inquiries. And credit card inquiries can be problematic to your credit score. So you wanna make sure that you limit the number of times you make an application, and you may wanna focus on card issuers where you know you have a better chance at getting an approval than not. I'll give you a really great example. If you have a credit score of 600, don't apply to American Express, because it ain't gonna happen. American Express does not have a subprime product, and you're gonna to have to have good credit to get one of their cards. You may do better with, you know, Credit One Bank, or a credit card issuer that does have more tolerance for people who do not have elite level credit reports and elite level credit scores. And so you may be able to get approved from that card issuer versus a different card issuer. And you may be telling yourself right now or saying, well, no, well, the interest rates are higher there. That's true, and you know why? Because they're subsidizing the risk of doing business with risky borrowers. However, 
interest on credit cards is optional. You are not paying interest unless you carry a balance from one month to the next. So when you choose a credit card, if you're focused on the interest rate, when you're doing your comparison shopping, I would suggest to you that you shouldn't get any credit card. You have already given up. You've already basically committed to carrying a balance if you're focused on the interest rate, because now you're just basically trying to find out the where it's gonna be the cheapest for you to carry your balances from month to month. And really that's not the best way to use a credit card. The best way to use a credit card is to use it, pay it in full, use it, pay it in full, so the interest rate becomes irrelevant. And then wherever you got the card, if it's a high risk type of card issuer, that's fine because it doesn't matter because you're not paying interest anyways. And once you earn a higher credit score, then you can start looking at other options for card issuers that may have better rewards programs and more elite status type of deal. And so you, you wanna be realistic with your expectations and you don't wanna shoot for the moon when really that's not even a, a real option for you at this point. So if you have any other questions about why you may have been denied a credit card or any other type of loan, drop them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get to them. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk again soon. For more videos and credit tips from John Olsheimer, go to www.tradelinesupply.com.